I was I was lucky and I suppose obstinate. It was when I started, uh, when I finished my work, my story, my collection of stories, and I was also at the same time writing my novels. They were both set in Dar es Salaam, and uh, and I was hundred percent sure that no publisher anywhere else in the world would would do, uh, find it interesting. So I didn't even bother. I sent it to the African Writers Series. And for me that meant a lot because as I said, you know, Chef began to our school, he was the first editor of the African Writers Series and uh, you know, those orange and white covers, were almost a symbolic meaning for us, for people of my generation. So I sent it to them and I, coincidentally, although that was not the reason, I mean, they're very conservative, so I am an lot of financial problems, but uh, it also turned out that the publisher at Heinemann's Africa Writer Series was, was a Brit, Brit English woman who had gone to the International School of Tanzania. <laughs> but uh, she sent it uh, to be evaluated by some other African writers. One of them was Abdul Raza you know. So I somehow lucked out because I, I did decided not to send it to a Canadian publisher or any other British publisher. I sent it to African Writer Series and they did exactly what I was writing about and uh, the, so they still took their time, you know. That's when my beard started going white. <laughs> <That was it. laughs> but they published it, uh, what those books, and uh, it made a difference. I mean, for them to decide, I think one and a half years or something. <laughs> Until finally, you know, I, I, I was I was a physicist. Then I went to uh, Antwerp, and then I told them, "I'm coming to London. Can I come and see you?" So they started worrying. <laughs> the guy is going to come now. We break up our minds. <laughs> and they gave me a little tiny sum of money. You know, I, I can tell you, I can get more money just by writing an article now. <laughs> for my old penny sack, that's what they gave me. And I said, "Okay." As I say, you don't write for money, you write because you have to write. Yeah, I think when you start out, you have an editor and since you are so grateful to the editor for everything to publish, <laughs> especially if it's a larger press, then you more or less uh, well, I will not say go along, but you, you, there's a tendency to go along. But I, I've had big fights with my with my editors uh, because for me every word matters, and you know sometimes you compromise. And I remember it for ten years later you know, that this word I changed. I should have. You know. uh, and then later I moved to another publisher whose editor sort of left me alone, except for making suggestions. The first editor, and I think a young young author needs a strong editor in the beginning, you know, uh, because uh, sometimes authors come with all kinds of uh, fan, fancy notions that this is my work and so on, but uh, they don't. Uh, there are some things that, after a while, are obvious. That are some mistakes that all beginning writers make. Uh, simple ones like repeating a word. Or, that's a common mistake, uh, unless you really th thought about it. Uh, so you, you need a strong editor initially, but then after a while I thought, that enough, I, I've learned. Uh, but then, I think that by, by the time you reach that, then you know what, what you are about anyway. I think Traditionally, there is a traditional pros and cons is that uh, self-publishing, people always say, oh yeah, I published uh, herself or himself. So there is a sense of, because others rejected you. Of course, the world has changed since then. Now you can go to Amazon and self-publish. Uh, the problem there is, of course, partly what was traditional in the sense that it's not vetted. And, uh, There is still the sense that it does not belong to a mainstream. But it's not necessarily true, you know, especially in the United States. People can write bestsellers that are 
but you know to have find acceptance in the academies, you know, in the schools, in the review system. Uh, we still have the sense that self-publishing is not quite it, you know. And then uh, who's going to edit it and how well has it been edited? It does not mean that the self-published work is not well edited. Generally, even if it's the best edited work, you are, to, you are along with all those cranks, you know, who think they're geniuses. <laughs> and how, how does, uh, how do you separate? How do you want to be in the same company? You know, with all these people who think they're geniuses, they're Tolstoy or whatever, you know, and they keep churning out books at Amazon and sell it to their friends. So that's the problem. But uh, as a last resort, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it, by all means, especially uh, I've advised people from Tanzania who wrote memoirs. But the memoirs set in Tanzania, however important they are historically, the rest of the world doesn't give a damn. Then I, by all means go to Amazon and publish it, and there are people who will discover it. But if it's fiction, then uh, you, know, you have to be careful. It's good to be part of a literary movement and then at least you know your worth and then do it. I think there's no other way. Even before Amazon, people used to publish what they call chapbooks. Yeah? And the, but they showed it to a certain group of people they respected and uh, they became known and commented on and so on, you can do that. But it has to be done with care. You know, I know the world is changing and you know, but at some point you have to make sure that, as I say, you know, you're not part of the world of cranks. Because there are millions of those, everyone is a genius. Journal that I keep, vocational journal, which for the last 30 years I have 